and we see these dark forces working through human beings where people are attacked because they're different whether they have um a different color on their skin or whether they're different because they speak a, a different language or they present different ideas that go contrary to the belief system of the listener that's placing judgment and directing hatred at the messenger. What I feel is important to internalize as, is that we are all here to teach each other. There is no one leader that's going to lead us out of this, uh, a savior, a messiah that's either in a physical or etheric form. The teachings of Jesus Christ are there to teach us to be of that Christ consciousness, to raise our vibration, to understand what it means to love your brother, to love your sister, to understand what it means to call out the dark forces and their kingdoms, regardless of how they might crucify you or sacrifice you. The teachings of Jesus Christ are not there to get you to worship a deity, be it Jesus Christ or in terms of New Age theology, the, the information that is in fact not New Age, but old spiritual teachings that people want to repackage and call New Age because there's a current theology that's been writing the last several decades about how extraterrestrials are going to rapture the good humans that raise their vibration and they will be moved off planet when the major, major earth changes start taking place. And I'm not here to attack anyone. I'm here to present my understanding. The semblance of truth in that theological worldview, which in many ways parallels the, uh, the Christian rapture view or idea, you know, of being raised off the planet by others. And uh, those left behind suffer. When we look at this from the soul's perspective, this makes more sense as opposed to an event on a certain day where physical bodies are lifted up off the air, lifted up, raised up, rescued from the planet. When you look at it from the, the soul perspective in terms of ascension, those that have raised their vibration to the required frequency in a future lifetime or at the completion of this lifetime will be able to move beyond the field, the earth's magnetic field, and go beyond this quarantine prison for souls. And they will earn, they will earn their ticket to a planet that is more evolved than this one. And they will continue their journey towards something higher. And this is, this is where my own personal spiritual work has been increasing. Increasing by the week, increasing by the month. Where my focus and attention is where I'm going after all of this. I know where I've been. I know where I am. And I know in the grand scheme of things, we're not really here on earth very long. People get attached to their relationships. They get attached to their jobs. People get attached to material things. They, they get attached, and it happens to me sometimes, uh, the fear of not having any money because we still are in a physical realm. And trade, for the most part, is still being conducted with the use of the dollar bill. But when I look at how much I've learned in just a few years, and when I look at some of the things that I've learned, ideas that have been presented to me that made me remember certain things from another lifetime, uh, trigger words, trigger ideas, even trigger voices. There's something about our voice, as I said earlier, where the soul is singing. And, and I think that it activates some of us. It, it helps us remember that we know that person from somewhere else. We were doing this somewhere else. We brought this knowledge from somewhere else. And I look at this learning curve that I'm still on. And much of it deals with the soul's journey and evolving to that planet, to that place where our soul group family is going to go and we will continue our work. 
because there's still so much more work to be done in terms of learning to love each other and work together to develop community without being some sort of a socialist collective reality, maintaining individual ideas, maintaining your own integrity, maintaining those positive aspects of your ego where you know your information and you're in your own space, but at the same time, having empathy for others, being able to listen to the ideas of others, even if they're not completely in line with what you believe to be the truth. So we have a lot more journeys that I think that we will be on together, my friends, beyond this physical realm. And in my own spiritual work, I put out the intent that I want to get my work done here on earth. And I want to come back capable of slaying demons and dragons that are waging war on not only humans, but other beings in this universe. I want something bigger than this. I want to go down to the big fight in the sky. And I want to make my mark in the sand. I'm not a violent person, but spiritually speaking, you know, there's something very familiar about taking the sword from the stone. There's something very attractive about decapitating the dark draconian entities. There's something very attractive about developing powers of the mind to where we are able to bring down the archons simply by our thoughts. And this is a big part of the theme in Dark City. You can watch it for free on YouTube. And I'm not going to spoil the story for you, but I will give you the basic, in my opinion, meaning behind the film itself. This man is being chased by these archonic, gray-like, dark forces because he has a special gift. He doesn't know he has a special gift, but he was born with this ability to destroy them when he applies his mind in that direction. This is why they're chasing him. This is why they're going after his memories. That's why they're trying to disrupt his actions. That's why they're attacking him. That's why they're shape-shifting in and out of his world, trying to assassinate him. They wanted his mind. They wanted his understanding. And in the end, their attempt was to replace his own mind with their mind, the archonic mind, so he would forget how to use his abilities, because at one point in the movie, and we are in a movie, and by the way, as David Icke says, if you want to change what's being projected on the movie screen, stop shouting at the screen. You need to go back and deal with the projector. So I highly recommend seeing Dark City and asking yourself what this might mean in your own life with the dark forces that you identify to be in your own life, be they demonic, extraterrestrial, or be they just simply the dark forces running this new world order. And this new world order is being held up, this structure, this kingdom, this state, this government, by many human beings that have chosen to continue to serve the dark side. And it may be possible there are those amongst us that have no soul. This is why they don't identify with spiritual concepts. They don't understand the concept of a creator. They don't understand the concept of a soul because it's not ringing anything uh, that seems to be true in their heart. It's not resonating. And this is, this is not intended to be demeaning. This information needs to be shared. There are many first-time souls that I believe are on earth. I've met many of them. I've met many souls that I believe may have been grazed in a past lifetime. They seem to understand the alien mind. They seem to be obsessed with, with the grays themselves and, and the icon of the gray, not because they want to expose the alien agenda, but because they identify with extraterrestrials. They identify many humans with, with the idea of being in a spacecraft 
traveling the galaxy. And that's not to say that there aren't light beings traveling in spacecrafts across this galaxy, but the highest light beings don't need a spacecraft. They're etheric, they're spiritual in form, they're non-physical. The physical craft is the craft necessary for the beings to have to depend on that technology, which means they aren't really as evolved as people may believe, especially as Hollywood uh, has presented them to be. So that's just food for thought, that there are many souls around us and amongst us that just got to Earth. They just fucking got here. And they know nothing about cause and effect. They know nothing about loving your brother as yourself. They understand the dark aspects of animal nature. To feed on life. To murder, to kill, to invade and take the resources from others. And there are many people out there that do nothing but just simply feed on government handouts. And they think that's legitimate money. And they'll run around attacking others that are independent thinkers that aren't living on a government handout. They're just simply being spiritual beings. Doing the right thing. And people will say, go get a job. Go get this. What they're really saying is, why don't you conform like the rest of us? In the way you walk, in the way you talk, in the way you speak. You're different. We don't like that. Being different is suspicious. And dark forces will work, oftentimes, through human beings to disrupt the actions of those that are on the spiritual path. Now, this is something that you need to prepare yourself for if you're going to go all the way and you're going to really pull that plug in the Matrix sense from the movie out of the back of your head. If you're going to go all the way and you're going to deprogram yourself, you got to be willing to be crucified socially. you got to be willing to let people attack you and you've got to develop the ability to deflect that attack. There is, there is this idea of resisting evil and there is this idea of renouncing evil. I want to thank Curtis Davis for reminding me of this. I'm going to be applying it to my own life. When you renounce evil, when you deny evil's power to affect you, you diffuse its power, which ultimately is very weak. What we cannot allow ourselves to do is give the evil, be it a spiritual evil or be it a physical evil, power that it does not have. This is why I've been saying for those on the other end of the polarity, you have the New Age polarity talking about consciousness shift collectively and external savior theology. And then you have the other polarity, which is heavily promoted by certain people in the alternative media. 80% of the human population dead. Guaranteed it's going to happen, just a matter of when. This is so dark. This is so fucked up. People that speak like this are not in tune with the larger picture. They are stuck in the physical plane of understanding. And this I hope you understand. And when people do that, what you're doing is you're putting the Illuminati at the creator level. And that is not mindful to do. One of the things that I've shared with people over the years, including family, that haven't exactly understood my path and how exposing 9-11 relates to the spiritual path or ascension path. And I've heard other people echo what I'm about to say. And we're going to go back to this concept. I've mentioned this before because it's very significant to this conversation. When 9-11 happened and those of us that were aware enough, that, that were insusceptible enough to see what was taking place and why it was taking place, we then embarked on a journey down the rabbit hole, where we begin to learn about other dark forces behind this government that are working to do what? Ultimately, attempt, attempt is the key word, enslave the human species and the earth itself. And when you look at the fact that there is something that created us, and 